Jesus and his followers were continuing through Samaria and Perea to the holy city. You remember the passages from last Sunday. James and John got upset at these people because they were not enthused about the arrival of the Christ. And they said, Jesus, we want to call down fire from heaven and consume these people. And I love the way this passage starts about Jesus and his followers continuing through Samaria and Perea to the holy city. Not only are they continuing, but he selects 70 more disciples. These are not the original disciples. They are 70 new disciples. And he sends them out in pairs, not apples, he sends them out in pairs, two at a time. They were to go in pairs into communities en route, proclaiming the approach of the kingdom of God. This is the only place this occurs in the four Gospels. This is one of Luke's writings. This is one of Luke's moments of sharing with us. Jesus began his charge to the proclaimers of the good news by explaining that the time was right for mankind to receive the grace of God. That doesn't sound like much of a gospel, does it? Actually, all they were doing was preparing the way of the Lord. Say what you can say. Say what you know. Say to people what has happened to you because you met Jesus. Don't worry about what it is you put together. As long as it comes from your heart and it is a testimony to the risen Christ in your heart and life. These dear souls, I don't know who they were, the didache, you're familiar with that? The teachings was a book put together in the early church to capture the rules that these guys should follow. The didache is the teachings, the teachings of the disciples, D-I-D-A-C-H-E. The godly man answers the call of God with something real complex. Here am I, send me. There's nothing all that complex about what he said to these people. But he gives them some additional details. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Lambs among wolves are in definite trouble because wolves kill. They rob. <coughs> Your neighbors had some wolves come in and steal the chicken. Fox. The fox, okay, okay. <laughs> in order to live successfully as a lamb among wolves, 
the Christian needs to be as gentle as a dove and wise as a serpent. That's our motif. Jesus dispatched the 70, telling them how they should conduct themselves on their mission. The urgency of their undertaking was emphasized by the Lord's instruction not to carry any unusual traveling gear. The word script in the text means knapsack or traveler's bag. The shoes were sandals, leather, leather soles fastened to the foot by straps. Though they are, though they were not to carry any extra pair of sandals, the 70 did not go barefoot. They just wore sandals. And into whatever house you come, I mean, just try to imagine this. Jesus picks out 60 of you, sets you off in pairs, tells you to go throughout this community. Don't take a bunch of junk with you. And whatsoever house you enter, first say, peace be unto this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. Do you ever notice that you yourself, when you come into a group of new people, you really are searching for who is the one or two or three or four people that I can get a test. Testimony from. And when you find one, you're happy. Oftentimes my girls come home and they say, oh, I met somebody today and and they rattle on and all of a sudden they say, and she's a Christian. And she's a Christian. And that means that they're going to get more mileage out of this relationship than they had expected. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Jesus also gives them power to heal the sick. I believe we all have more power that comes from the Lord through the Holy Spirit into us, but we're, we're a little sluggish, we're a little lax in applying it to the dear souls that we meet. Let me, let me brag about my, my wife just one more time for you. She loved to tell stories. She loved to tell stories. And we always had company. And when it came time to go, like we already heard three, four, or five times from everybody, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go home, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. By this time, I'm out in the car, or I'm out holding the front door open, and all of a sudden, my wife has begun telling the longest stories you ever heard in your life. Of course, I fuss at her about that. But she just loved to hang on to people, especially if they love Jesus. And she just loved to get their testimony. Of course, I just love to hear her say all that once again. 
Okay? Mm -hmm. And if the son of peace be there, mm -hmm. your peace shall rest upon him. The house that you go into, if you sense that the peace of God is there, you identify it. And Jesus is telling these 70 people, his peace will remain with you. Because they're not only eating and drinking, but if they got a sick relative in the house, he's going to get healed. I want you to remember me saying this. The power that comes from God through the Holy Spirit that heals people is available to us. We need to access it. We need to access it for each other. I don't care how old you are. I, I see a couple of people over at Mountain Home. They got good attitudes. Because they've got good attitudes, they're trusting Jesus. Of course, my prayers helped a little bit. But we need to be more aggressive in claiming the promises, claiming the victory that comes through Jesus. Jesus wants to heal people. I know it's a crazy world. But God wants his children to love people and to offer his healing. But into whatsoever city you enter and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same city and say, the very dust from the city streets that would cleave to our feet we do wipe it off against you. I don't quite know how to interpret that. But when people accept your witness, there's a blessing coming. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. They're the words of Jesus. Notwithstanding, be you sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. What a blowout of a glorious <laughs> message is that. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's a time period when the people that he had sent out <coughs> are coming back to him. And they return unto him saying, Lord, even the devils flee from us because of your name. And he says unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Amen. Mm -hmm. You ever reach moments where you need to be hear hearing something like that? Mm -hmm. Rejoice because your name is written down in glory. <coughs> and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Mm -hmm. The white robe mm -hmm. angels sing the story. Mm -hmm. 
a sinner has come home. Bum, 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 bum. You know that song, don't you? Clara knows you it. Know I don't know it. I can't think of it. There's a new name written down in glory. And that's what this is all about today. Is your name written down in glory. And the marvel of that whole thing is it is at the hands of the dear soul who was able to say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart today. Forgive me of my sin. Make a, make a place for me in heaven because I'm coming there pretty soon. Bless the Lord. Oh, my.